Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to session 29 of Principles of Management course. I am your instructor Dr. Shikha N. Khera from Delhi School of Management, Delhi Technological University. This is part 2 for managerial communication students. We have already discussed part 1 where we try to understand the process of communication, methods for communication, functions and importance of communication process in the organization. By now we have understood that communication helps the manager to motivate the individuals to do the task. They themselves also get motivated because communication makes it easier for them to understand their roles and responsibilities. It is a phenomena for emotional expression where people can discuss their anger, frustration, happiness to each other, be it a formal or an informal setting. Managerial communication also helps in achieving the organizational tasks as the managers have full power here to share the information with all the members and stakeholders of the organization. So having said this, let us try to understand what are the next components of communication process that we have to understand in today's session. So we need to initially start with the factors which influence the organizational communication. So what are these factors that influence? Critically, they are the outcomes and we shall discuss them one by one. Organization climate, roles and relationship, value system, emotional context and attitude. So these are various factors which influence the communication process. Let us start with organizational climate, the very first factor which affects the managerial communication. So organization climate means a collective perception of members about the organization, how together they perceive what organization is all about. They may have positive or they may have negative perception of their organization and its characteristics. As I have discussed the culture and climate, what exactly it is already discussed in the previous session. These are very, very many values and beliefs that people have, their ethics and code of conducts that people have in the organization. So the, this perception of organization members actually influences something and what is the influence here? It influences behavior of people in organization and based on the style of communication with each climate type, what kind of climate we have, the organization can be further classified into four categories. What are these different kind of organizational climates? This can be supportive climate, innovative climate, I believe they are self explanatory terms, respect for rule climate and goal oriented information sharing climate. Now these are very positive climates, all are very positive climates, they should be there in the organization and what supports it? Communication process or they affect the communication process of the organization. So supportive climate model is high degree of importance is attached to informal and accidental contacts and also for bottom to top communication in this model which is also called as bottom up approach. So when we talk about informal and accidental contacts, this is through networking that you have built, the kind of contacts that you have built through networking and this can be the personal relationships also with which you can have a task oriented relationship communication developed later on. In innovative climate model, flexibility and speed are the essence of communication for decision making. So here people have a creative mindset, they have this flexibility to be creative, there is nothing such called as failure and people can utilize their innovative acumen for better performance in the organizations. Communication this type of climate is usually two way that is downward and 
upward. We by now I think we understand very well what is downward and what is an upward communication. For example, vital information can be discussed verbally by managers through informal meetings and written confirmation can be obtained through the formal meetings. Respect for rule model is formal communication, strong centralization and rigid hierarchy are basic characteristics of this model. Centralization we have already dealt with, we know the hierarchical levels and the communication pattern also. So, the adjectives attached with it include rigid hierarchical levels that is very fixed and permanent, strong centralization means no power or delegation of authority to the members and formal communication means the channel of communication is always formal and preferably the written method to be used. So, this model aims at exercising strict control over individual behavior and establishing managerial supremacy. Most contacts in this model take place within a department or office with the purpose of passing or seeking information and this generally relies on one way information dissemination. Why? Because it is respect for rule model. Next is goal oriented information flow model, goal oriented and task oriented leadership are basic characteristics in this model and in this contrast, in contrast to respect for rule model, it is opposite to it. The hierarchical structures in this model are not rigid and they are not always insisted for information exchanges. So, here the purpose is we have to fulfill the goal as compared to respect for rule model where the purpose is to follow the instructions or follow the rules. Then comes role and the second aspect that is the second parameter quickly telling you what is the second parameter just to connect role and relationship. Right now we have discussed about various organizational climates, its types which exist and which influence the communication pattern. Now we are trying to discuss the role and relationship. So, this role and relationship is the nature and kind of relationship prevailing between sender and the receiver. So, nature of relationship means whether it is formal or informal. This can influence the organizational communication process. The role managed by managers as superior, subordinate and peer group members while communicating with others can also determine the communication styles and approaches. So, the same manager can be super superior for someone, can be subordinate for someone and can be a peer group member for someone. So, he may adopt different communication styles and different approaches to communicate when in different roles. For instance, the status and interpersonal equations among the organization members can get reflected in their communication style and practices. Next factor that influences communication in organization is the value system. Value system refers to the ethical and ideological values held by the individuals and the organization at large that guide their behaviors in the situation. Now, one behavior is that we should not steal anybody else's possessions and in organization also that ethic and ideology has to be followed. So, if an individual has that ethic of not stealing other person's property, then we will have that kind of ethical and ideological values and this value system will be inculcated in the communication pattern also and the same goes vice versa as well. So, value system adopted by managers in their thinking and decision making process can also influence the communication practices. How we can say that? For example, managers who are with liberal values, they may encourage some kind of informal and upward communication because they are not very rigid. So, they will allow their subordinates to speak with them as they have liberal values. Thus, what we have understood liberal values or the value system has affected communication pattern in the organization. Then comes the emotional context. Emotional environment prevailing at the time of communication can have an impact and on the nature and style of the communication. Now, what do we mean by this emotional environment? For example, when sender and receiver 
they both are friends or they are enjoying the friendliness in that case they have a warmth in the relationship and with this the communication exercise would be what kind of communication communication will be stress free because they have a warmth in relationship this is warmth in relationship because they are friends with each other so this emotional environment also has an impact on what kind of style of communication will be utilized in the organization and then comes finally attitude an individual's personal likes and dislike for something is described as his attitude and manager's attitude can also influence the way they receive interpret and act on the message so this is very very personal trait what attitude manager carries here if i give you an example for instance a manager with positive attitude can take everything positively and also he will radiate what will he radiate he will radiate positivity in their communication with others and this way they make the whole communication process pleasant and productive and this is what we want in the end we want the communication process to be pleasant and productive so thus what we have understood we have understood various factors which impact the communication style in the organization now besides the above uh, factors that we have studied there are another four factors which influence the communication practices and decisions let us see what are these factors apart from the one we discussed formal communication authority structure information ownership and job specialization let's discuss even these one after the other to understand them better formal channels of communication include communicators operating through formal channels usually have restricted participation and freedom this is because the formal channels are regulated controlled and sometimes stifled by the manager here the uh, subordinates and the other members in organization have little freedom to bring in change a few examples of formal channels of communication are newsletters reports memos etc in the case of formal channels managements may find it difficult to keep pace with ever expanding communication requirements of fast growing organization so thus it is difficult to maintain the formal channels and then we may opt for some informal channels the second factor includes authority structure that affects the communication style of the organization so authority is what authority is the power vested in the position thus authority and status difference among the senders and the receivers can affect their communication styles and practices so we have to remember this that if we are communicating say for example from this lower level to the higher level in that case authority difference is quite high and thus the communication pattern and style will be very much different than if we communicate at this same level so the seriousness and accurateness of communication can also be undermined by such authority differences for example communication between a chief executive officer who is the senior most person in organization and his peon may be characterized by excessive politeness and formality so this excessive politeness and formality is the communication style that will be followed because of difference in authority structure next is job specialization so communication what is job specialization students job specialization is when people have very specific tasks to be done what we call as division of work they are highly specialist in their areas like we have specialist doctors we have specialist technicians etc so communication within a homogeneous group can be more effective than a heterogeneous group 
so what is a homogeneous group homogeneous group is that all members belong to same positions say all faculty members so that is a homogeneous group heterogeneous group is that someone is a faculty someone is an engineer someone is an accountant so that becomes a heterogeneous group and communication is easier where it is easier in homogeneous and difficult in heterogeneous group this is because members of homogeneous group with high job specialization they are all specialist in specific area they may tend to use same symbols technical terms and behavioral styles so it becomes easier for them to communicate well so job specialization affects the communication style this may also share same object they may also share same objectives goals activities and time horizons which makes it easier for them to communicate well with themselves next factor the fourth factor which affects communication style in this category is information ownership information ownership means the one who is sending the information is he the owner of the information owner means either he has developed that information or he is the one who is authorized to share that information because of his position in the organization so organizational members with unique talents knowledge and skill are usually reluctant to share such uniqueness to others and this information ownership we also call it as a tacit knowledge here i would like to explain you students something about two terms one is explicit knowledge and second is tacit knowledge what is explicit knowledge students explicit knowledge is the knowledge which is readily available it is already there in the written formats and that is the general knowledge you can say general knowledge that means it can be used by anyone it is a written documented form maybe in print media maybe in electronic media etc tacit knowledge is the knowledge that any person gains based on the experience of doing that job so if i am right now teaching i have got some explicit knowledge on the content i am delivering and some tacit knowledge on the content or maybe delivery method that tacit knowledge that anyone gains over the years is a personal property and the person becomes the owner of that information so then when an employee leaves the organization he takes along with him huge amount of tacit knowledge which may be of importance to his juniors in organization for carrying out other operative works but the challenge is that this person who's leaving the organization is not generally interested in sharing the same knowledge with others so it this challenge has to be dealt with and this affects the communication style in the organization as i have mentioned here so this is the uniqueness that the person carries and thus they may refuse to let others learn certain privileged information and skills and just to why it so because they have they want to maintain their supremacy in the organization because they know if we share this information then maybe people will not value us any more the way they value us today so this may affect the openness of information sharing and also the communication effectiveness in the organization so by this we have tried to understand these four variables also which are very important in identifying different communication styles or they influence the communication styles in the organization now moving on to the next concept that is forms of organization communication so here organization communication which allows people within an organization to communicate with one another has several aspects what are the several aspects based on authority as a basis it can be formal communication or it can be informal communication and based on the flow pattern it can be downward upward lateral or diagonal communication so there are two bases that we are discussing for the uh, communication one is authority i have the authority or i do not have the authority based on that i will be communicating and flow of pattern whether it is 
in which direction the communication is going on. So, we will have a discussion in detail about all these patterns of communication. Here, authority as a basis for formal communication. Now, authority as a basis has first format formal communication. What is formal communication? That confirms to the structure of organization. Organization structure strictly guides the flow of formal communication. What is organization structure? Students, if you remember, there are hierarchical levels in the organization structure and the way I am drawing it right now, this becomes the channel of communication. So, for example, for from this position to this position, the channel of communication is going to be like this. So, this is the formal communication that takes place in organization and it has a clearly established line of authority and reporting structure. So, this is authority and reporting structure. Formal communication is usually the easiest and smoothest way to communicate in the organization. Why is it easiest and smoothest way? Because in the organization it is controlled and regulated by the managers. Written communication is the most common and preferred form of formal communication. So, we say that formal communication is generally done through the written communication and formal communication may include among others reports, memos, disciplinary actions, queries and staff meetings. Second is informal communication which is also called as grape wine. Why is it called as a grape wine? Have you seen a grape wine students? A grape wine plant has this kind of structure which is a grapevine fruit and this fruit is born on a creeper. This creeper or the climber moves in any direction in any which ways. That is why this informal communication is also called as grapevine. Now, communication occurring outside the formal channel is called as informal or grapevine this kind of communication is not at all authorized. That is the most important characteristic of informal communication or prescribed by the structure of the organization. It is not prescribed, not authorized. This communication generally arises as a response to employees need for social interaction and relationship building. So, you also do grapevine with your friends in class when you are free, you do not have any task to do when your teacher is not there in the class, you go for grapevine. Informal chit chatting at the place of work is grapevine. Informal communication usually relaxed, casual, but it is faster form of communication. So, the another important characteristic of informal communication is that it is a very faster form. You tell one of your friends that exams are starting from tomorrow and within one hour whole of the school will get to know that exams are starting from next day. So, it is a very faster form of information sharing because it is not rooted through official channels. So, here we have some information on a open communication initiative at Dr. Reddy's laboratory which is one of the renowned corporate in the country. So, Dr. Reddy's has a corporate communication team which ensures that the firm's employees remain connected and updated about affairs of the organization through open communication channels. In this regard, it has an internal magazine. So, how do they open this communication channel or have an, a communication open channels? Internal magazine called Elixir, which serves as a platform for employees to get to know their colleagues from across the company. This magazine also helps them to be aware of the features and activities of their organizations. And besides the company also hosts an in-house circular around Dr. Reddy's and the intranet portal myreddies.com to keep the employees updated with emails on sustainability from CEO and corporate communication team. So, this is one of the corporate example students where which we can see that whatever we are studying in the theory has been implemented by the corporates to have ease of communication, not only ease of communication for communicating relevant information through relevant media to relevant receivers. Now, the second this we have understood authority as a basis. It gives way to formal and informal communication. Now, let us study flow pattern as a basis and its subdivisions. 
flow pattern as a basis the first subdivision is downward communication so what is downward communication from top to bottom communication that passes down the organizational hierarchy is downward communication and it may also be defined as an information flowing from top of the organization in the management hierarchy and telling people what important mission and policies of the organization are. So, downward communication is generally used to communicate what is the mission vision of organization and what are various policies of the organization. This characteristic of this communication is that it is a traditional form of communication through which superiors they pass orders, instructions, notices, directives, circulars, etc. The primary purpose of downward communication student is to get the job done through the subordinate because if the superior is not going to communicate or issue orders then how the subordinate will get to know that what is my job and how I have to how I have to complete it. So the managers they do so or superiors they do so by issuing them necessary directives thus it is a downward communication. Next is the upward communication as the basis of flow pattern. The upward communication says that here the flow is upwards towards the organizational hierarchy and the upward communication information typically flows from subordinate to the superior. Now the arrow has changed from lower level to the top level. This form of communication includes appeals, grievances, complaints, feedback, reports, judgment, estimations etc and also sharing of data. Upward communication is very essential students for gathering feedback from the subordinates from the lower level employees on what on how well the organization policies plans are being met objectives are being under process to be adopted and fulfilled. It also helps the employees in sharing their work achievements, creativity, progress, suggestions with the management and upward communication helps the management in getting to know the simmering troubles and dissatisfaction amongst the employees. As we already discussed in upward communication people can share their grievances and troubles that they are facing. After upward communication let us discuss the lateral communication. The communication between persons who occupy equal levels in organization structure but belong to different functional areas are known as lateral or horizontal communication. So horizontal communication in organization is when you are at the same level. So you are vice president operations, vice president marketing, vice president HR, vice president finance. So all are at the same horizontal level specialist in their functions and the communication between them is called as lateral communication. Communication between a production manager and marketing manager is the example which I have just now explained. So lateral communication may simply be defined as the flow of messages across functional areas at a given level of an organization. So here the catch is to understand is a given level of the organization. Lateral communication is what? communication at a given level in the organization. Then comes the next that is diagonal communication based on flow of communication. Here communication amongst individuals who occupy different levels in the organizational hierarchy. Here you can see levels are not same they are different levels in organization hierarchy and they belong to different functional areas is called as diagonal or crosswise communication. So it goes like this. This form of communication is useful for specific projects members are usually from the driven from different departments. So we can have a senior accounts officer having being a team member with manager marketing and sales. So here the communication that will take place will be a diagonal communication. Here information can pass through both official and unofficial communication channels because they have to work together and accomplish the goal so they can use both the mediums. Also in diagonal communication, communication this is the example for marketing manager and general manager finance can be classified as a diagonal communication. This form of communication can you can cause something which is not acceptable that is misunderstanding. 
between whom between the superior and the subordinate when the former is kept uninformed about the diagonal communications of the later as we have already discussed diagonal communication is between two different specialist or two different functional areas so there is a possibility that the senior accounts officer is not keeping in uh, loop the manager finance and is discussing things with manager sales and marketing so then it may give trouble to the manager finance after that we have discussed about various types of communication pattern based on authority and flow let us now discuss on a very important and critical aspect that is barriers to organization communication when we talk about barriers what do barriers means barriers were the noise that we discussed in the previous session when we were talking about the communication process noise can be any kind of disturbances that take place and distort the communication so what is to be communicated when it is to be communicated and how it is to be communicated managers must proceed with ex execution and while they are doing this execution of what when how they may face challenges at any stages of communication process this is because the communication process can get distorted can get distracted and can get defaced and the because of presence of various potential barriers so it is important that manager must identify the barriers in the communication and try to rectify them or remove them so barriers to organizational communication normally arise from three sources what are the three sources these three sources include originate within sender originate within receiver and then comes originate in the communication environment now when we say originate within sender so that can be a preconceived notion or that can be a attitude difference of the sender while he is sending same thing applies to the receiver maybe they do not have the common language or decoding pattern because of which the barrier is existing when we talk about the it originates in communication environment then we are talking about the noise that is coming in between this noise can be a literal noise say for example you are talking on telephone and some kind of unusual noise is coming in between so that is a barrier to the communication which happens very frequently nowadays what do we say when we don't hear other person's voice we say signals are not coming we are not able to hear you properly what is that that is a barrier to communication another barrier to communication which i want to highlight to you people is called as semantic barrier semantic barriers are also called as unclarified assumptions now what are unclarified assumptions have you gone to market for shopping with your parents sometime and did you see on the board hoarding written from far you can see 50% off and you are allured okay let me go to the shop it has got 50% discount but when you go near to that 50% you see a very small word written up to which is written in a very small font and this up to which is written in a very small font is the semantic barrier this semantic barrier gives some wrong information to the receiver and with with that result the receiver is not in a positive mood to give a right feedback because as soon as you enter into the shop and you see that it is up to 50% not 50% it is just 5% 7% 10% maybe 50% on very few articles which is of no use to you you realize it was waste of time and you also realize that i have been befooled by the uh, shopkeeper so it then creates a distrust between the sender and the receiver so this is what is semantic barrier and this originates from the communication environment let us discuss different various important barriers which occur in the communication pattern first are the individual barriers now individual barriers are caused by the attitude and behavior problem of the senders first is the filtering thing now what is filtering thing few people have a habit of withholding the information they also believe in not to tell correct information or full information maybe because they feel that if i communicate correctly my colleague will then present himself well and maybe he can win over 
me in the positions also in organizations. So this say in some kind of insecurity in the employees or in some members creates this feeling of filtering the information and not communicating everything. This then becomes a individual barrier in organization. So when communicators withhold information in part or full is called as filtering. It happens both in upward and downward communication flows and it can also be both unintentional and intentional. When it is unintentional that can be rectified but when it is in intentional so that means there is lack of sense of belongingness and motivation on the part of the employee. Unintentional filtering can occur due to faulty encoding and decoding of messages by the sender and receivers respectively. So here chances are because of lack of knowledge you have done this error or this barrier has been created. Second barrier is frames of references. So frames of references refers to a system of assumptions and standards that approve certain behavior and give it a meaning. What do we mean by this? Frame of reference is a unique for each person and is formed based on one's education, experience, training, expectations, culture, personality, functional demon, etc. Now, in this all these areas what the person has done he has tried to form a reference for himself based on which he then communicates further. So for any communication to be successful frame of reference must mean the same thing to the sender as well as to the receiver. So they, that means they should have some cultural values in common, they should have some training in common, they should have some experience in common or education in common, then only the communication can be effective between the two. Then comes emotions as the barrier. Emotional state of mind of receiver can influence the interpretation of the messages. Now what do we mean by emotional state? This emotional state can be gloomy, maybe the receiver is not in right mood. This emotional state can be very happy, maybe he is again flying high up in the sky mentally and that is why he is not ready to receive. So for instance, when communicators and receivers are going through positive emotions like interest, enthusiasm, laughter and empathy or maybe boredom and curiosity, they can be more open and receptivity as compared to when they are in their negative that is gloomy mood, negative emotion. Next barrier is the preconceived notion. Preconceived notion means we have made an opinion about something beforehand. So predetermined opinions and notion about other participants in communication process can influence one's attitude and response to the messages. For example, the receiver's trust, confidence and faith in words and past actions of sender may create a positive or negative opinion about them. If he communicated wrongly and the trust is not made then probably the communication cannot be effective and the preconceived notion is that that person is calling or that person is coming he is bound to lie. If that kind of uh, preconceived notion is built then communication cannot be effective in that scenario. One of the individual barrier which is pertaining to the receiver is lack of effective listening because it is not always the sender's fault. It is also at the receiver's end very important to be quiet and give time to the sender properly, listen quietly and then try to comprehend what sender intends to say. But if listeners have a habit of quickly jumping into the conversation, breaking the conversation in between, not concentrating on what is being told, then this barrier becomes the lack of effective listening skill barrier, which also distorts the communication process, meaning is not conveyed. So listening generally involves acquiring, retaining and comprehending the information. Active listening by receivers can facilitate accurate interpretation, better retention of the message which is expected from you as students that you should be in active listening mode must understand and interpret the information which is being shared with you by your teachers. In contrast inactive listening, selective listening and reflective listening that is interpretation based on how the information is conveyed or said by the sender can distort the interpretation of the communication and disturb the communication process or the information is not clear. Next barrier is defensiveness. So communicators and receivers may turn defensive when they feel threatened or insecure.
threats may arise out of their fear of loss of status, fear of rejection, desire to be perfect in public eye and absence of self confidence. So what is defensive basically? Defensive means self protection. So what they do? They try to protect themselves for any wrong deed even if they have done. They are not in a mode to, they, they lack confidence basically. So in such situations they may tend to avoid direct and rational response to the communication. And when they avoid this direct and rational response to communication, what happens? Distortion of communication. So as individuals, we must avoid these mistakes while we are communicating. The next individual barrier is time pressures. So managers or senior managers may have tight deadlines, time pressures often prevent managers from keeping frequent contacts with their subordinates. And this time pressure may also force the managers to abandon formal channels and leave out to few intended subordinates while communicating with others. And when, once they leave out these subordinates, then again interpersonal relationship is disturbed. The ones who are left out, these subordinates may feel that we have not been given due importance as subordinates and then as a result communication later on cannot be effective with, between them and supervisor. In the long run, this may affect the trust, commitment and motivation of the deprived subordinates. After individual barriers come the organizational barriers. Now factors found in organizational environment that reduce the effectiveness of communication are generally called as organizational barriers. They are where are they present? They are present in organizational environment and what do they do? They reduce the effectiveness of the communication. So the first barrier is culture. It refers to the behavior, value, beliefs and characteristics of a particular group. We have already discussed this. So when organizations have different cultures, it may affect the communication effectiveness. So this is one of the reasons which disturbs communication. In a multicultural environment, that is they have different cultures, so managers may be compelled to adopt different ways of communicating with the members. Multicultural environment means you have people from different geographic zones. So thus their understanding of all communication pattern would be different and needs to be catered differently, otherwise it becomes a barrier. Second barrier is language. In organizations, language can be a barrier to communicate effectively and if no common language is available for communication amongst other, it can distort. In such a situation, exchange of information amongst them is very much restricted and is mostly formal. For example, regional, cultural, ethnic factors, they exert influence on English accent of most people in India. We speak in different accents, accent of someone from northern India is different than accent for someone who is from southern part of India or maybe from eastern or western part of the country. So language also then becomes a distortion or a barrier to the communication. We do not understand that accent well, so we do not understand the meaning of the communication. Then comes structure. It refers to the way in which people and positions are interrelated in the organization. So we are simply talking about organization structure. So lack of clarity in organization structure may act as a barrier, especially when people are not clear about their roles and responsibilities in the organization. They are not clear of their roles and responsibility in the organization structure. So this is because they may be uncertain about what is expected of them and whom they have to communicate. So thus flow of communication has to be clearly defined in the very much formal structure of the organization. Status difference between various persons in the organization that is the position of the person in organization relative to the other also distorts the communication. Status symbols associated with positions such as job titles, office cabins, office furnishing, salary, reserved parking a lot can become a effective barrier to organization communication. People having Differences in their job titles, differences in office cabin or differences in furnishing and salary will not 
try to see each other with the same level or with same note they may have some attitudinal differences and thus would not have a healthy communication or may not have healthy communication between them such status symbols may interfere when the free flow of communication between superior and subordinate takes place thus as a result it then doesn't allow the communication to be highly positive and effective then in the organization another barrier is information overload now communication may become a problem when managers are overloaded with more information than they can effectively handle with information overload there are chances that they will filter the information but now unintentionally because they have lot of information so thus they may filter and not correct information is passed on to the send to the receiver thus communication gets distorted so in recent times managers often face information overload due to following reasons and the reasons can be advancements in information and communication technologies such as internet email sms increased role specialization and task complexities that necessitate gathering of more information for effective decision making increased disturbances in external environment which often force managers to collect and analyze huge volumes of information to handle such uncertainty so because of information overload managers frequently face difficulties in effectively absorbing that information and processing such information and in such situation what mistakes they do managers in such situation they respond in any of the following ways they omit some information they make errors they wait till the information inflow ceases queuing that is time delay then filtering of information approximating general responses to all categories of information escaping also is one of the route that managers adopt and adopting multiple channels for regulating regulating information flows so all these then are manifested and thus in the end we do not have the right communication or feedback or completion of information sharing between the sender and the receiver then noise we have already discussed about noise though earlier so it refers to both physical noise as i explained and the mental noise affecting the communication effectiveness physical noise can be because of bad signals because of machine problems mental noise can be because of re receiver's concern for any other matter that is receiver may be lost in his own thoughts so this is also one of the very important barriers in communication and then comes security as a barrier fears about safety of information and reliability of communication tools sometimes compel the communicators to reduce their dependence on few channels so again this is very sensitive thing safety of information and reliability of the source of communication or communication tool and because of which the manager may not adopt that tool or use that method as communication method so when employees suspect that a particular channel has high potential to be monitored by others they may tend to reduce the amount of communication transmitted through such channels now students we have discussed a lot about what can be the problems distortions troubles and barriers in communication now it is the time to try and find out how to overcome these barriers what should the manager do so that these barriers are reduced to a larger extent it is very difficult to eliminate the barriers from communication altogether but yes with the help of some strategies we can always reduce these barriers what are these strategies first is employee orientation initiatives so when it comes to employee orientation initiative i'll just go through first the all barriers then i'll explain them one after the other so employee orientation effective communication plans and policies enhancing interpersonal relationship efficient listening ease of language enhancing non verbal communication ensuring flexibility emotional stability effective feedback and empathizing these are various strategies by which we can overcome the communication barriers 
So, employee orientation initiative is that we have to guide and tell the employee what is the importance of communication, what are various channels of communication, what can be various barriers to communication which you should eliminate. You can think of eliminating preconceived notions, attitudes, etc. So, first and foremost thing is that we must teach our employees and orient them, their thought process needs to be changed and oriented. Second is effective communication of plans and policies. So, whenever we want communication to be right in the organization, we must communicate first various plans and policies of organization so that everybody knows where they stand, what is the role of that particular person in organization plan and the policy to be adopted. Then enhancing interpersonal relationships. When it comes to enhancing interpersonal relationships, we have to build a kind of harmony amongst the team members, maybe through sensitivity training, through recreational activities, taking them for outside off-site locations for maybe river rafting or some kind of enjoyable activities or maybe celebrating some specific days in organization itself, organizational premises. So enhancing this interpersonal relationship will help them have a reduction in the barrier which respect which relates to their status in the organization or, or which relates to the hierarchy levels. Then efficient listening is something which needs to be taught to people across the organization that we have to not only be effective speakers but we also have to be efficient listeners too. Ease of language, a common language to be used, especially the challenge of languages in the multicultural environments. So, in multicultural environments, common language or symbols or signs or words need to be adopted by all the parties or stakeholders. Enhancing non-verbal communication skills, it is said that students, 90% of words are communicated through gestures and body language or 90% of message is communicated through gestures. So, it is important that non-verbal communication also is enhanced by which people can communicate at the same level at the same page. Ensuring flexibility, giving them creativity or innovative environment to communicate with each other, to plan and to execute the both communication and planning pattern will ensure that the members in the organization are well knit with each other. Emotional stability is what we need to tell people about that they have to balance all their emotions and feelings with respect to different aspects, maybe anger, aggression, happiness, etc. So, they need to balance themselves emotionally so that this emotional instability should not cause any barrier to communication. Effective feedback helps and ensures the organization to come up with right kind of communication uh, channel or you can say right kind of meaning of communication is there. So, effective feedback helps in telling every stakeholder that what is to be improved from next time. And finally, empathizing if unintentionally especially there is some mistake which happens then we must empathize with the members in organization, tell them how do they can rectify and remove all the barriers and come up as effective communicators. So, after these strategies to overcome various barriers in the organization, we shall now try to see different aspects of communication levels. So, how to improve interpersonal communication? We shall be discussing two things, one is life position and the other is transactional analysis. So, first I will start on with improving interpersonal communication that is life position. What is a life position? It was uh, managers desiring Basically, it was given by Eric Byrne, who was author of the book. He authored a book, Games People Play. And here he described that how decisions about themselves, about our self we take in our world with respect to our relationships. So, there are four quadrants and there are four statements reflecting to the quadrants. First statement is, you are not okay with me. Second is, I am not okay with me. So, I am thinking that I myself am not okay. I am okay with me and you are okay with me. So, let us see what each quadrant tell. Each quadrant is one life position. This is first life position, this is second life position, this is third life position and this is fourth life position. Now, in each life position, Eric Byrne tried to tell us what is our state of mind. 
first it says I am okay, you are okay. So one down position I wish I could do that as well as you do. So here he says that you are doing good but I am not doing good. In this second life position I am not okay, you are not okay. So neither of us are okay. So this is the hopeless position in the thought process. Here it is a terrible situation and we will never make it kind of attitude jumps up in our mind. Fourth position is I am okay, you are not okay. So here we have an attitude that I am doing better than you. So one up position, you are not doing that right. Let me show you how to do. And the best position, life position for all of us to adopt is I am okay and you are okay. So the most healthiest position of life, we are making good progress now. So what Eric Byrne wanted to convey through life positions was that we may fall trap of various different positions in life and we may think and perceive that I am not okay, you are okay. But the best ideal situation is that we must adapt to scenarios and believe in that I am also okay and you are also doing the right thing and we are moving in the right path to have a balanced mind and have clear cut right communications. Apart from one quadrant, rest three quadrants. In all these quadrants, the communication that will take place will always be distorted. While in this quadrant, the communication will be of high, great importance. Now the second way to improve interpersonal communication is called as transactional analysis. Students let me just tell you here the transaction is not a financial transaction rather it is a communication transaction which is being talked about. So this communication transaction is very very important and this means we want to talk about what and how we communicate with each other. When we are communicating, communicating how we transact with each other. So again in this transactional analysis it is being conveyed that there are three different ego states that we all have okay let me tell you first is the parent ego state that we all have what is parent ego state parent ego state is the taught ego state when we are into our teaching concept right now i am teaching you so i am in my parent ego state then there is an adult ego state adult ego state is the thought ego state thought ego state means where we think where we have rationale where we have logic and the child ego state child ego state is where we have felt where we have feelings emotions so that means what we want to convey here we all have all three ego states parent adult and child at different phases of our life it can be different biological phases even at the age of 50 someone can behave like a child in front of their parents and even at the age of 21 someone can behave like a parent in front of toddlers so what we wish to convey here that we all have three different ego states now what happens in these three ego states we communicate with each other this symbol is for parent this is for adult and this is for child so we communicate with each other from one ego state to the other ego state of the receiver so if i am a sender right now i am in a parent ego state and i am sending you information to your adult ego state that this is communication these are the channels of communication etc etc so if you respond back with the same ego state of your adult and you say yes ma'am we have understood it properly and we know the importance of communication then we call it as a complementary transaction but if i am telling you as a adult and you are responding me back from the child ego state. I am not referring to your child ego state. I am referring to you as an adult. But you are responding me back. Ma'am, I don't want to listen to you. Ma'am, I want to go to drink water. Ma'am, I want a break. So that is your child ego state which is responding back. And while you are responding back from the other ego state I have not directed to, then we call it as a non-complementary or a transaction, crossed transaction. And this is very much negative transaction and it distorts the communication pattern. Now the third kind or last transaction is called as the ulterior transaction ulterior transaction is that I am conveying something to you as an adult and you are responding me back as an adult to the parent but undercurrent the communication taking place between the two is at different ego level so here we have some under meaning of the words I'll just tell you an example for this here if I am teaching in the class and you walk into the class and the time the class used to start was at 10 a.m. and now it is 10 30 a.m. As soon as you enter into the class, I ask you, what is the time by your watch? So my parent ego state is asking your adult ego state, what is the time by the watch? And your adult stage is answering me, the parent ego state, it is 30 minutes past 10. 
this is the this is the transaction which I am talking about here, the transaction which is direct between the ego states. But is it the direct uh, the transaction? No, it is not a direct transaction, there is an ulterior transaction taking place between you and me. And this ulterior transaction is what? This is I wanted to say you are late and you wanted to convey me ma'am I do not bother. Otherwise had that been the case that it was a complimentary transaction you would, you would have answered sorry ma'am I am late today rather than telling me that it is 10.30 am. So I hope you have understood what are various types of transactions and the ego states that we have and these transactions in communications are very important for having effective communication. So that means if we have complementary transactions then we have effective communication but if we have non-complementary transactions or ulterior transactions then we do not have effective communication in the organization. So summing up students since communication is the basis of almost all the activities of organization managers they should make all possible efforts on a continuous basis to improve the speed, reliability, accuracy and quality of the communication and hence what we can say is that communication has the ability of improving the efficiency of the manager, improving the organizational goal achievement, improving the motivation to do the task for the by the subordinate. So it is important that communication patterns, challenge, channels, processes, style, everything should be taken well care by the managers in concern. So this is about the managerial communication students. We have completed the topic and these are for certain references that I have referred to for completing this managerial communication. And in case you wish to read, you can go through these material at your ease. And let us now conclude this session. Thank you to all for listening to me.